Hey guys, it's Open Quant here, and today let's solve question number 10, 10 floor building. So in this question, we have a building with 10 floors above the basement. We have 12 people who get into an elevator at the basement and each choose a floor at random to get out independently of the others above the basement. The question then asks, how many floors do we expect the elevator to stop to let out one or more of these 12 people? So to, we'll start with an illustration as usual. So right here we have our basement. We'll call this level zero just, uh, just to keep, uh, this, I guess, the illustration tidy. And we have our 12 people. So we have person one, person two, dot, 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 person 12. And above that we have 10 floors. So floor one, two, and again, 10. So there are, 10 distinct floors and each of the 12 people are going to choose one of these 10 floors to get out independently of the others and the question then asks at how many different floors will the elevator stop at or what's the expected number of floors that the elevator will stop at so for example if people one and two uh, if this person right there and that person right there both get out on floor one and then let's say everyone else person three to 12 all get out on the 10th floor. This is pretty extreme hypothetical, but the elevator is only stopping at two floors, one, two. And in that instance of the uh, of our scenario, the number of floors, let's denote it as S, is equal to two. To begin solving this problem, we're gonna extrapolate on the idea that we introduced in the introduction of this question, which is the random variable S which we have defined to denote the number of floors the elevator stops at. So we can jump right in and try to find a way to calculate the expectation of S using the definition of expectation, let's say, which would be, I guess, the aggregate of all the possible outcomes. So S in S can take on values between 1 and 10, and then we could write S times the probability that big S equals this little s right there. And this is entirely accurate. This is quite literally the definition of the expectation in the discrete, uh, for a discrete random variable. However, I'm going to introduce a strategy or technique or a little tactic, which I think is quite beneficial to problems of this nature, and that's indicator random variables. Essentially, what an indicator random variable is, is that it allows us to break down a large random variable, in this case S, into the sum of smaller ones. And then we can use very helpful properties of the expectation and random variables to aggregate them together and get back to the original random variable we're trying to solve. So in this case, we're going to actually denote each floor, so each floor from I in one to 10 because there are 10 floors and we'll call xi as the random variable the indicator random variable that's equal to one if we stop at floor i and zero if we do not stop at floor i and this ow stands for otherwise so what we're doing actually is then breaking down s into the sum of all of these random indicator random variables, x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus x10. So let's just take a step back and verify if this conceptually makes sense. So for x1 to equal 1, it means that we stopped at floor 1. And let's say x2 equals 0, it means we did not stop at the second floor. And so on and so forth, let's say, um, you know, each xi take on respective values, either 0 or 1. Uh, x10 is equal to, we'll say we do end up stopping at floor 10 and maybe two people get off at that floor. So it gets value equal to one. So then S is equal to, let's say in this case, um, you know, actually we'll use our original hypothetical where people wanting to get off at floor one and then everyone else gets off at floor 10. So in that case, every random variable, all of these ones right there, x2 to x9 are all equal to zero because nobody gets off on the second floor all the way up to the ninth floor. The only floors that people get off at are the first and the 10th. And as a result, 
for uh, those random variables, those indicator random variables take on value one. And as we can see, the aggregate is exactly two, just like we had uh, seen that it should be based off of our initial example. The reason we want to use indicator random variables for this problem in particular is that it's much easier to solve for, uh, it's much easier to understand this random variable than it is the aggregate of 10 of them. And by actually breaking them down into 10 sub random variables, um, we can begin to compute the expectation uh, likewise. So we're asked to solve the expectation of S, which we can then say is equal to the expectation of x1 plus x2 all the way up to x10. And by a helpful property known as the linearity of expectation, uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, I do recommend you know, uh, briefly looking it up and understanding. This sum breaks down into expectation of x1 plus expectation of x2 all the way up to the expectation of x10. Furthermore, the expectation of an indicator random variable, a random variable that only takes on values 0 and zero and 1, is simply equal to the probability of that x of that random variable equaling 1. And again, this conclusion it follows from the definition of the expectation, this what we kind of hinted at above and earlier. So this sum breaks down to this x10 equals 1. And again, I just want to reiterate just in case uh, it's, someone's missing this, but this dot 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 is just because I don't want to write out all 10 indicator random variables for every single line of this expression. So now we're asked to solve for the probability that an x1 or an x2 or an x10 is equal to 1. At this point, you know, we could break down this calculation and do it 10 times. But it's helpful to notice there's a very symmetrical aspect to this problem, and it's that the 12 people get off at the 10 floors uniformly at random. There's an equal chance that they get off at floor 1 or 2 or 7 or 10. Furthermore, they act independently of each other. As a result, based off of these two facts, we can actually write each of these expressions, each of these probabilities, as just the probability that a given floor, let's call it xi, is equal to 1. So the probability that x1 is equal to 1 is equal to this. Probability that xi is equal to 1, dot, dot, dot. Probability that xi is equal to 1. And in this case, again, i is just a random floor. It could be floor 3, it could be floor 5. It's any of the 10 floors. So again, we can aggregate the summation, it's 10 times the probability that xi equals 1. Great, so now we have this, this entire expression, we've, we've broken it down to this much more digestible format. Let's begin to actually solve for this expression. So we are trying now to solve the probability that xi equals 1. And I'm just going to verbalize what this actually means. It's that the probability that someone gets off at floor i. Okay. Someone means at least one. And when you see at least one or someone or, you know, terminology in such a manner, it's very helpful to at least consider the complement rule. And in this case, that is actually the way that we want to solve the problem. And this expression right here, the probability that xi is equal to one is equal to 1 minus the probability that xi is equal to 0. And, you know, this logically makes sense given that the entire indicator random variable is evenly, is, is partitioned between the two events where we have it equaling 1 and it equaling 0. So this, this makes a, a lot of intuitive sense. So now we have to solve for the probability that xi is equal to 0. So this is a pretty drawn out process, I understand, but, um, Hopefully it makes sense. So the probability that x i equals zero is the probability that nobody gets off on floor i. And now, finally, I promise we are going to begin some actual computation. So the probability that nobody gets off on a given floor i means that of the 12 people, 
they are choosing nine of the remaining 10 floors to get off instead. So for a given person, let's say person three, he's choosing one of the nine remaining floors to get off at. And that will occur with probability nine tenths because he chooses each of the 10 floors uniformly at random. And because there's 12 people instead of just one, the probability that nobody gets off on a floor I is nine over 10 to the 12th. It's nine over 10 for person one times nine over 10 for person two, all the way up to nine over 10 for person 12. Each of them are choosing one of the remaining nine floors, not floor I to get off that. Great, so now once we have this expression right here, we can begin a little cascading effect all the way back up. So we can plug this in right there. And then this right here is equal to the expectation of Xi, which we uh, have found that the expectation of S is equal to 10 times that. So let's, let's just con concatenate all these expressions. I'm gonna just bring it all the way back down here so that way we don't have to keep referencing back up. So right here, we have found that the expectation of S right here is equal to 10 times the probability that Xi equals one. So we're gonna write 10 times the probability that Xi equals one. We know that the probability that Xi equals one is this expression right there. So it's equal to 10 times one minus the probability that xi equals zero. And finally, we just solved for this expression right there and we know it's equal to this. So we can say this is equal to 10 times one minus nine over 10. Again, it's this whole expression to the 12th power. And you know, like this is actually our answer right here. And I, on most quant interviews, I don't believe that they would be expecting you to solve this or reduce it in any way. Um, but I use the calculator to verify that this expression is roughly around 7.1, uh, let me see, 17. Um, it's roughly 7.17, which means that for the 12 people, we are expected to stop at around seven floors to drop them all off. Uh, I hope this explanation made sense, but if you're still a little bit skeptical, I understand. And that's why we have a coding simulation to actually verify using randomized data that this expression is actually accurate for the real world. All right guys, so here's our coding simulation. So right here we have our simulate trial function, which for the 12 people right there, we are randomly picking a floor for them to get off at uniformly at random between one and 10. And then for the trial, we actually return the number of unique floors that the elevator stops at. That's what the set function does, is that it gets rid of duplicates, and then we return the length of this list without duplicates, the number of unique floors the elevator stops at. So then 10,000 times, we simulate this trial and add it to this list result. And we then compute the average of this list and divide it by the total number of entries. Uh, and again, theoretically, we should be getting a value around 7.17. That is the expected value of S that we came up with when solving the problem with probability theory. So let's run it, see how far we, okay, so 7.183 uh, for the first trial, 7.16 for the second and the third, 7.18 again. So as you can see, all three trials very close to 7.17, indeed proving that the theory that we worked out in our uh, problem above is accurate. Thank you.